A few weeks ago, I set up this jar, but it's not just any jar. I built it using water, sand, and plants from a sewer drain where the water was completely polluted. Within just a few days, surprising organisms started appearing. Creatures I never expected to find there. Insects, worms, snails. I sealed it and forgot about it for weeks. Until today, when I opened it again for the first time. Not only is the jar still thriving, but entirely new animals have appeared that I didn't see at the beginning. But let's start from the beginning. For this jar, I wanted something different. We've already seen how life emerges from clean rivers and healthy streams, but what happens if I build an ecosystem using elements from the sewer? Polluted water, urban runoff, with who knows what in it. You can even see how the water gets cloudy from soap and other contaminants. This water mixes with the ocean, so it's slightly brackish. I collected water, sand, plants, and the rest of the materials from the drain, and headed home. It was time to build the jar. First I added the layer of sand and small pebbles, just like I found them. Then I added a couple of rocks covered in algae. For the jar to be self-sustaining, it needs a source of oxygen, and that comes from plants and algae. So I added the algae and plants I collected from that canal. Filled it up with the same wastewater, and placed it on a shelf where it would get enough light for photosynthesis. A few days later, the water cleared up. The jar looked calm, apparently lifeless, but soon the first animal appeared right in front of me. Bladder snails. I'm not surprised to find them here. They can survive in heavily polluted water, how even with very little oxygen, because they can breathe both underwater and at the surface. I found several adults and a few tiny ones like this one here. And around them, you can see a whole constellation of microorganisms swirling around. To get a sense of scale, we can compare it to this planaria sliding past, about the size of a grain of rice. But don't worry, we'll take a closer look at that strange animal later. These snails reproduce fast, so fast that they had already laid eggs. If you zoom in enough, you can see the tiny snails moving inside. This jar would have died on day one if it weren't for the base of life here. Plants and algae. A lot of people ask me how these jars can stay alive for months or years while completely sealed. And the answer is right here. These algae absorb nutrients and carbon dioxide produced by the organisms in the jar, and in return they release oxygen. Here you can see bubbles rising from the plants and algae. This is essential for the animals. Without this exchange, everything would die within days or even hours. This plant seems to be adapting well. You can see new shoots growing upward, reaching for the light. But the plant's survival was in question because of these tiny crustaceans. Scuds. Another classic in these ecosystems. They can live in polluted water as long as there's enough oxygen. They mainly feed on dead or decaying plant matter, but if food runs low, they'll go after healthy plants, which is exactly what we see here, feeding on live roots. For now, it's the only one I've found, so I'm not sure it'll thrive in this ecosystem without a mate. On another side of the jar, stuck to the glass, I found these tiny insects. They seem to be aquatic mites. They're very small, but that doesn't make them harmless. They're actually strong predators of microinvertebrates, helping maintain balance in the ecosystem. A few days later, a strange white layer had formed near the bottom, almost like a fog. Was it due to decomposition? dead animals, it didn't take long to notice something bizarre. The substrate was moving, but it wasn't the substrate. It was dozens of worms crawling through it. These are tubifex worms. 
also known as sludge worms. They're real survivors. They live in environments with extremely low oxygen and tons of decaying matter, where life for most animals would be impossible. Near the tube effects, worms appeared the largest and most imposing predator in this jar, the planarian. These animals are astonishing. If you cut one in half, you'll end up with two new worms. They're also predators, feeding on microinvertebrates and other small organisms, as well as organic matter. It's surprising how quickly it moves across the glass, almost like it's gliding. But who are the invertebrates that feed these strange predators? If you focus on one spot, suddenly you'll see a cloud of tiny dots dancing around. Almost like a constellation of stars. These are thousands of tiny creatures we can't see with the naked eye. Some of them are copepods, one of the most abundant animals on the planet. They're found in fresh water, salt water, pretty much everywhere. These invertebrates are practically living fossils. They've been on Earth for hundreds of millions of years. The sacs you see underneath are eggs. The female carries them until they're ready to hatch. When that happens, dozens of nopli are released. And in just one or two weeks, they become fully functional adults ready to reproduce. A bit larger are the ostracods, seed shrimp. One of my favorite animals in these ecosystems. They're like tiny clams swimming around with their shell on their back. The shell protects them from predators, and they feed by filtering particles from the water. In this jar, we can find two species. This dark, smaller one, and this bigger, pinkish one. But from this variety, I've only found a single individual. Looking at this jar, full of life that emerged from a polluted urban waterway, I can't help but be amazed. Nature's resilience, and the life that makes it up, is unstoppable. This little jar is a reflection of that. Even where everything seems lost, nature finds a way. It shows us that even though we damage ecosystems, life continues, adapts, and persists. I hope you enjoyed this experiment as much as I did. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss updates on this and other ecosystems. A few months ago, I made a similar one, but with marine life. And what emerged completely amazed me. Hundreds of strange animals I had never seen before. Click here to watch it. Thanks for watching.